welcome back to She Tried It. I first want to start by thanking everyone who hoped that I would get better. I'm feeling a lot better. And just for those wondering, it wasn't COVID or anything like that. I just had a little issue that we'll talk about later in another video. Anyways, today I'm so happy to present to you this gorgeous European wrap by Megan Lynch of Freesia Fibers. Just to rip the bandit off at the beginning, today's video is gonna be kinda weird. I had so many hurdles with completing this pattern, but regardless, I got it done, I really like it, and I wanna share the details with y'all just like I do all the other patterns I complete. However, at the current moment of filming this video, this pattern is no longer available. It's been deleted from Ravelry and Etsy, and Freesia Fibers' website is nowhere to be found. Unlike other times, I'm not gonna link the designer's contact information below because I'm not sure she's still a designer and I don't want people bugging her to release the pattern again. But I will tag her in my Instagram post. I wanna make it very clear up front before diving into all these details, but as usual, there'll be timestamps below, so let's get started. awesome Chicago-based designer with tons of great patterns. Again, with the website being deleted and the patterns on Etsy and Ravelry being removed, I literally have no way to prove this to y'all, but take my word for it. Her designs are really beautiful. Why they're gone is completely beyond me, but I don't want to give her too hard of a time because again, I don't know the reason she closed up her shop, so I really hope everything's okay. I actually purchased it on Etsy back in October of last year. And you might be thinking, October of last year? Why are you just not completing it in April? So yeah, let me tell y'all a little story time. I was planning on making this pattern at the end of last year. I was working diligently on it. I was ahead of schedule and then my worst nightmare happened. As you can tell, this wrap is extremely long and flowy. I was knitting this piece on the only set of knitting needles that I had, which were some really cheap ones from Amazon. As I was knitting one night, my needles just snapped and all the stitches fell off and I almost lost it. I completely set the project aside and decided not to deal with it until months later. Let me know if any of y'all have ever dealt with your needles snapping and how do you deal with it? Cause I just completely avoided it. From y'all's perspective, everything was on schedule and I made the mezzo cardigan, but internally my heart was broken. Anyways, fast forward to this year, I didn't want to make the same mistake as before, so my first move was completely stepping up my knitting needle game. I've heard so many knitters rave about interchangeable needles, and I didn't understand what the hype was all about. But I contacted my friends over at Knit Picks who are sponsoring today's video, and they hooked me up with a lovely set of Prism Aluminum Interchangeable Circular Knitting Needles. Guys, interchangeable needles are such a game changer. If you've never tried them before, I highly recommend these. If you want to check out the ones I'm referring to be sure to check the description box below. From that point on, I salvaged the stitches with the lifeline and I moved on. What makes this pattern so wonderful is the details. The European wrap is a whimsical convertible piece inspired by Megan's friend Emily Kate and her adventures abroad in Rome. This wrap can be worked in a ton of ways and probably more ways than I even realized. I will say that this pattern, similar to the Bomber Bolena that I recently shared, is made only for one size. However, I think that one size would fit a lot of sizes. One of the the main things that drew me to the pattern was the fact that I was going to learn the technique of steaking. For those not familiar with steaking, it's the scariest possible thing you could do to your completed knit make. It's basically when you cut your knitting. You legit cut into your knit project with scissors. Y'all, at this point, my nerves are so bad with this pattern. The pattern got deleted, the Instagram was gone, my needles broke. I was just expecting for steaking not to work out as planned. Just to be safe, I recorded the process for y'all and I'm not a fan of steaking. I'm just gonna be honest with y'all. Okay, everyone. So I wanted to record this moment in case it doesn't work out. Um, I'm gonna try to make it look good for a video, but you know, if it doesn't work out, I am just trying to keep this memory of steaking. Okay, so I have reinforced with crochet along this side and along this side. And I believe I'm gonna cut those lines going horizontally in the middle, just cut it all the way down. I watched a Very Pink Knits tutorial, and that's what I think. I'm very scared to cut the edge, so I'm not that confident on what I did, but um, I'm definitely gonna cut, when I say cut the edge, I'm scared to cut like at the very end right there, because I don't know which point to cut, they all look the same. But in the middle, I think it's very clear, it's just that point going along down. And as I understand it, I've reinforced the sides and then I need to weave these in. Whew. I have my scissors. 
And I do this for both armholes. So let's do a test cut for the one point. So I cut it and then it did this. <clears throat> so it's not the point I thought. I I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm not doing sticking again. If a project has that, I'm staying far away. This is too much for my anxiety. Cause she cut one point. It seemed like I'm gonna have to cut these now. Cause all that one cut did was just basically drop the stitch and now it's like it looks like this um, Jessie May, Jessie May project where she like dropped the stitch. That's what this looks like. That's not what I was going for. I need a hole, so. Oh God, would you just hold up this be a fail? Okay, I got these. For some reason I saw her pulling stuff out. You know what? I probably need to watch the tutorial again because I don't know what I'm doing. But anyways, I'm just gonna cut these. I'm cutting them. just making the whole opening. She said it would fold in on itself, which I guess it technically is. So this is how this looks right now. Pretty clean. The other side, not so clean, but it's on the inside, so it doesn't matter. This is clearly not a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes it's not a tutorial and I'm still confident in what I'm doing. This is not one of those times, so we'll see. <laughs> so now it is just all these little sideways stitches I'm gonna cut. Hope that's right. Okay, I did it. I cut it. <laughs> I did not like that. Um, I'm gonna leave this together because I'm scared of messing something up. Um, Okay, are there are <laughs> said, I tried following a sticking tutorial from Very Pink Knits, which I'll be sure to link below. There was a corresponding blog post on Megan's website about sticking, but with the website being deleted, I had nowhere to go. And I did find her personal Instagram, but because I'm not sure she's a designer, I didn't want to bother her. To be honest, I wasn't really sure where the sticking was supposed to happen, so I kind of winged that part completely. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the scariest thing I've ever done, and I have no intentions of doing it again. I really don't know if I did it right, but it's good enough for me. I'll also let y'all know that this pattern does not come with any instructions on how to wear it the way that Megan wore it in the picture on the pattern, but, I wear it this way. Here's a little tutorial of how I kind of put it together. I could not for the life of me figure out how she did hers, but this is the way I do mine. this make really lies in the details and one of those details is that this make uses three different weight yarns in the exact same color well I use the exact same color I'm gonna try to show angles where the variation of the yarn weights can really shine through but regardless it's nothing compared to seeing it in person the yarn that I used is part of the gloss family from knit picks I use gloss DK gloss fingering and gloss lace and of course y'all know something else had to go wrong so again, I'm sad to announce that gloss lace no longer exists. I promise that's the last bit of bad news I'm sharing in today's video. Moving 
right along, the color that I used is called War. This is a cross between worn sea glass and muted spearmint. It's a sophisticated light teal that pairs well with soft blues and warm grays. In other words, it goes great with jeans. <laughs> All the yarns in the Gloss family have an unbelievable sheen to them due to their fiber content. These yarns are 70% merino wool and 30% silk. The DK yarn comes with 123 yards for every 50 gram ball, and the fingering yarn comes with 220 yards for every 50 gram hang. Hey guys, that's all I have for you today. I'm so sorry that this make didn't really go as planned, but I tried. I personally have never seen a pattern similar to this, but if you find one, let me know, and I'll post that in the description box below for anyone who wants to make something like this. Or if Megan decides to change her mind and sell this pattern again, I'll also be sure to update you. I think the real star of today's video is the interchangeable knitting needles I was able to get my hands on. Be sure to check out the link to them in the description box. Regardless, I can assure you the next video will go a lot smoother. I just completed a crochet pattern test and if things go as planned, I'll be baking in my makes again. So make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, see you in my next video. Bye.